Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're tackling skin inflammation. We're gonna break that down into acute and chronic and based on that information, I want to explain to you how to choose a tretinoin or retinol product that will best suit you. And also this will be based partly on the nature of your skin and partly on the nature of your personality meaning how badly do you want the results and what downtime are you willing to go through to get them. So that is the conversation today. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share with your friends. If you do all of those things, that would be super amazing. And let's discuss inflammation. I'm sure you know the word. It applies to any part of our body we can develop inflammation and the states of inflammation are broadly categorized into acute inflammation and chronic inflammation. But let's address the skin. What acute inflammation examples of that would be if you got a sunburn, if you cut yourself, if you went and got a laser or microneedling, something that injured your skin, you will develop an acute inflammation. In fact, acute inflammation is the process we want to turn on in the skin that helps, number one, the healing process, and number two, the stimulation of collagen, which is something we talk a lot about on this channel. So acute inflammation, good. Chronic inflammation, bad, bad, bad. Chronic inflammation would include high uh, sugar levels in the blood and the tissues, like in diabetes that can cause glycation. Uh, sun exposure over time that causes sun damage creates a chronic inflammation so then when we get the brown spots from sun damage that can be from chronic inflammation and the skin is a manifestation of so many other problems in the body for example the gut the gut and the skin are so closely related a lot of problems that begin in the gut actually manifest on the skin so the skin is very very tricky but our focus here today is really anti-aging and retinols and tretinoins. So a philosophy of Dr. Zane Obaji from the Obaji Skincare Line or the Zio Skin Health Line is that the way to treat chronic inflammation can be by actually causing an acute inflammation on top of the chronic to kind of shock the skin and basically turn it on properly again and get everything to function as it should should from that shock and that will make the chronic inflammation go away because it's almost like hitting the reset button on the skin and once it resets itself it's going to work normally and the chronic inflammation will go away so now that we've kind of got a general idea of what a chronic inflammation is, like a skin disease that you've had for a long time, rosacea, for example. How do we treat it? And if you recall, or if you're interested, I did do a high dose tretinoin program for five months, and I have a video about it that I'll link down below. And the changes in my skin were phenomenal. I saw the biggest one that I saw really quickly was my pores just cleared up. My pores cleared up, it was incredible. My skin had a glow because I was constantly exfoliating at a much faster rate, more like a child, that kind of speed. And it was just beautiful. And this was with the high dose, which was one gram. I did one gram of tretinoin nightly. This is not for everyone, as I said in my other video, and really for a lot of people, it would be okay to try if you're under the supervision of your skin health uh, professional. If you're under that supervision, you can navigate through it, but I think trying that on your own uh, in most cases is probably not a good idea. You could just cause yourself more harm than good. Um, the long-term effects if you keep using tretinoin is really if you take a photo of yourself down the line in three to five years you'll actually notice you have less wrinkles than you did five years ago so that's the long term you're not going to see that over months addressing the question of should i use a high strength tretinoin and how many nights a week and when would you use a high dose and why and tretinoin versus um, retinol for example 
And ultimately, the bottom line is we don't want to create a state of chronic inflammation. And that's why when I did the five month high dose tretinoin, it's really important to stop that after five months because if we keep going, the inflammation is going to continue and then really the skin is not gonna be very happy. And the dosing often depends on what you're trying to treat. So for plain anti-aging and nothing else, yes, you can incorporate just a low dose of tretinoin or retinol forever in your skincare routine and it's really going to help with the lines and the collagen. All of us are different. All of us respond differently. There are people who can not tolerate tretinoin or retinol at all. There are people who can tolerate it, like some of my really close friends, but they're not willing to have the flakiness. They're not willing to, you know, have an uneven uh, skin or have it show through their uh, foundation or their what's it called tinted sunscreen so they they don't want to be flaking so they're not willing to deal with it that's where the personality part comes in if you're not willing to put up with the side effects of starting really it's the starting process of the retinols and the and the tretinoin then chances are you should start either a really 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 low low dose or forget it and use other things. There are so many other skincare uh, ingredients that you could incorporate. There's really nothing like vitamin A derivatives, but you have to do the dance, your personality and your desired outcome and find a balance. If you're trying to treat something like uh, oil production, acne, uh, brown spots, uh, you're trying to reset that skin, like I mentioned before, shock it out of a chronic inflammation state, then you can hit it with a high uh, dose uh, vitamin A derivative for four to five months and then settle into a more um, gentle skincare routine and then your skin will settle down and the inflammation will go away. This is why he treats rosacea with tretinoin. He treats hyperpigmentation with tretinoin skin, just texture and, and um, lines and just the laziness as we age, our skin gets lazy, our fibroblasts get lazy, the cell turnover gets lazy. So to kind of snap it out of that, basically, yeah, hit the reset button and have new skin and go from there. It works for me. The one thing I will say for people who say, I have tried to be on a retinol and I just can't tolerate it. This was me. So I just wanna share my own personal experience to see if it would help you. When I first started using Trendno and I would use the small pea size amount and I would, I did it once a week. I think I started with a 0.05% tretinoin uh, once a week. And then every time I applied it, I always had the same reaction, the redness and the peeling. So then I thought, well, if I do it twice a week, maybe more often, my skin will get more used to it. But I find that if you have enough time in between, every time you start, you're kind of starting at the same starting point. You're not actually really building up tolerance. You're always, let's say you apply the tretinoin and your skin reacts and then it settles down and then you apply the tretinoin and then you it, you're always here whereas if you bump it up quicker and tolerate the that stage of inflammation and irritation and peeling and flakiness, you actually kind of go from here, you get irritated, you apply it again, you get irritated, you apply it again, and you're actually creating that tolerance to it. So if you can't tolerate it, you can't tolerate it. There are definitely people like that, but if you can't tolerate it, maybe because you're not using it often enough, try using it more often. Maybe use very little, like a 0.0, to 5% or a really light uh, retinol 0, 0.0 or um, like a 0.25% retinol and start with a small dose but more regularly so that the skin gets used to the same dose all the time and then bump it up in the same dose all the time versus 
apply a higher concentration, stop, wait, heal, apply a higher concentration, stop, wait, heal, and you're always kind of in the same spot. So if you really want to treat your skin, if you really want to overcome your inflammation, if you have concerns, issues, then it makes sense to try a higher concentration retinoid to kind of jumpstart your skin into a healthy function of epidermis, dermis, cell turnover rate, and get it going in that direction, and then stop once you're balanced, stop. Or if you're just anti-aging, you're just adding another ingredient into your skincare where you know long-term it boosts collagen and is beneficial over years, then yeah, add just that low dose, whatever you can tolerate and just use it regularly. And you don't necessarily ever have to bump up or, or change anything as long as that lower dose works for you. And so lower dose, think of lower dose as kind of like you're fine just the way you are and you're just adding another ingredient to sort of slow down the wrinkle process to keep the collagen production up and running. But if you have a concern you want to fix, if you have chronic inflammation you want to address, that would be the time to sort of use it as a therapy for a short period of time. And then once your skin resets, you slow down again. I hope that makes sense. I didn't want to overcomplicate it, but I wanted to break it down to help people understand when would you use a low dose? Why would you use a higher dose? What's the point of a you know 0.1% retinoin over a 0.25 retinol? So to recap, again, it depends on your personality and on your skin tolerance, but the higher doses want to create a state of acute inflammation to treat to reset the skin and hopefully eliminate a chronic state of inflammation. And the lower dose is sort of like the, the marathon, the marathon, running the marathon for increased collagen and longevity of a youthful skin. I hope that makes sense. If you guys have any questions, leave them down below. Um, feel free to, I don't ever say this as I always forget, but um, if you want a virtual consult with me, um, I'll leave a link down below. I also make medical grade skincare products available to you guys that are only um, available through physicians dispensed office or physician offices or med spas. So you can find Skin Better Science, Elastin Skin Health, at, or Zio Skin Health and Elastin on my website if you're interested. And if you wanna know more about skin procedures and um, in-office procedures, I post that mostly on my uh, Instagram account. So feel free to check those out, okay?